pricing your condos to sell how to price your condos assignments real estate properties so you can sell it this is Yossi Kaplan Toronto real estate agent mortgage broker with search realty and search mortgage we are at the back of the back I hope the noise is not too bad this is Toronto construction everywhere so how do we price our property so they sell I would do this uh, across my computer but camera down so there you go it's on the phone okay so 50% of all properties on MLS do not sell. I'm going to say it once again. One of two properties posted on MLS do not sell. So what happens is once they don't sell, um, they get removed off the MLS. Either they expire, they're terminated, they're suspended, um, or they remove by way of the price uh, change. So that's no longer the same listing, if you will. Uh, and eventually it sells if the price is right or it goes back to the hands of the owner. Um, the reason these properties don't sell, uh, there's multiple reasons, but obviously the main reason is it's priced too high. So why are people pricing the units too high? Why are people pricing their condos, assignments, homes too high, and then they don't sell? Okay. And the other thing you need to remember is even if they're pricing too high and they don't sell and they go off the market, it's not going to show in the stats. So the stats you get um, are... Uh, probably not straight up because they don't include properties that didn't sell they only show you what's sold <laughs> okay so Yossi Kaplan Toronto real estate agent mortgage broker Toronto King West is where I work you can see here this is the this is the kingly condos right behind me the top section here the commercial that's a commercial office and in the back here let me see if I can show you these are the condos right here and uh, these condos here are on assignment right now. Some of them still on the market oh, for a long time. Still going. Um, and they need to sell. Why are they not selling? So this is what it goes. First of all, there are two pricing strategies that you all need to be aware of. You can't just go into a listing, you know, ask someone to sell my condo, sell my assignment without having a proper pricing strategy. And it goes like this. First, you need to do is to really be honest with yourself and professional enough to understand um, what price this unit is worth and remember it's going to be worth the same unit it's going to be worth different price if it's uh, summer or winter if it's on a long christmas vacation or in a hot you know may or june where the market's hot uh, if it's a uh, assignment that you can walk in or still on the construction or it's got occupancy if it's a resale that I means it was closed so the closing costs are less than new construction or assignment right because those are expensive to close um, if it's far in the future or if it's closed you know the assignment is going to take occupancy soon or it's already on the occupancy that means you got to get the mortgage ready so all these affect the price um, these days and like i said in a previous uh video the pricing of condos have changed it used to be the resale was the most expensive because it deemed to be the safest you know what you're getting into you know here's an old house i'm getting in there and here's a new condo I'm getting in there and here's another condo I'm getting in there so I know I can walk in there and see what I'm getting but with assignments or pre-construction you can't so those used to be the cheapest but now they're the most expensive because people just want to put their five percent five percent five percent and then flip it watch my video on flipping okay but if you can't um, then you gotta assume it and then we gotta price it so I want to price my condo to sell how do I do it well obviously I'm going to look and do the research, what it's really worth, uh, bear in mind the condition, the time of day, the time of year, all these things, you know, it's assignment, it's resale, it's pre-construction, it's this, it's that, it's to the right, to the left, it's high, it's low, it's got view, it's not, good flow, but no, that's okay. Let's say I found the right price, and I got to tell you guys that I'm usually right on the money. Uh, most of my listings that sell based on my recommendations will sell with less than half a percent of what I add, what, what I said it will okay I'm usually within half a percent two percent around where I said it's gonna be um, usually I price slightly below just a tad below what I think because that elicits offers and then we can push the price slightly above what I think you'll sell however if I price it high and then I wait for the offers uh, that doesn't always work and I'll explain why there are two main strategies of pricing. One is the retail strategy, which I just mentioned basically. Why retail? Because you know you go and it's uh, just before Christmas and you have to buy this gift, you're gonna pay full price for it. Okay, so there's a big demand in the market. You gotta get it now, so it's full price. However, if that didn't sell, 
you know, the moment, the day after Christmas, Boxing Day, the prices start to drop, and actually they're the lowest in January. The market is dead. So that's retail pricing. You give it full price, and hopefully you sell it. But if you don't, you have to reduce, 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 reduce. So your first point of reduction. Uh, well, there's also there's also uh, Black Friday in retail, so that even messes things up even further. But just for our um, purpose of this discussion, the retail strategy means I give it a full price or even above what I think, then we're going to sit on it, hopefully someone will take it, but if not, I start to reduce, reduce, reduce. Um, that is what a lot of people do, probably over half, maybe two-thirds, uh, but that's probably the worst strategy to use, in my opinion, and experience, because it doesn't work that well. It actually takes longer to sell the, the condo or the property. Um, it's stressful. Uh, a lot of owners don't understand. Why didn't you sell it for me for nine hundred thousand? The agent says, "But it's only worth eight fifty. Says, "Well, get me a buyer for eight fifty. I said, and the agent says, "But I can't because people say nine hundred. They don't want to do it. They don't want to go for it because it's too much. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing is the people that may search for a certain price range. Say they search in the eight, you know, eight hundred to eight nine nine, but your price at nine, it won't even show up on their search." It just won't show up because their search is limited to, to $899,999 because the bank said, don't go a dollar uh, above $899,999. Don't, 900 is your max. That's all the mortgage you can afford. So they won't even see it. So that's another thing. If you, if, if you, you don't know what people are searching for, but usually they'll search within you know, $25,000. But some of them say, hey, the bank says I can invest $618,500 exactly. So then... Maybe they'll look for 620, 625, hope they get a bit of a discount. But remember, most units they sell, when they sell, they sell for very close to asking. Why? Because if they're not close to asking, if they're above, it's got, that's retail strategy. You're going to have to reduce, reduce, reduce until the market deemed it good to buy. But if you've been sitting on the market with that property, you've been reducing or just sitting on it for months on end, people start to wonder what's wrong with it and they don't even look at it. You know, you burn out the listing. So that's the one. The other... The opposite is the bid strategy, where you price your unit below and try to get a very attractive number. And once you do that, you price it below the expected price, of course, and you try to get an attractive number. And once you do that, uh, you, you hope to elicit uh, uh, multiple bids. And obviously, you hope that people will bid, say, I want it, no, I want it, no, I want it, no, I want it. And you'll reach some kind of a price which is above your expected price. Now, that works well. Uh, for properties who are very sexy, um, wealth sought after, wanted, hot new condos. If you got an old place and you know and, and your price is not down enough and and you say, yeah, you know, I think it's worth a million bucks and I'll price it at 990, well that's that's just not attractive enough. It's just not enough of a, of an incentive for someone to come and give you a bid. So you gotta make sure that your bidding uh, <laughs> The, the, your your uh, uh, start price is is um, attractive to those who's going to bid on it. You know what I'm saying? That means that I need to price it in such a way that people would really want to come and see it and give me a bid that weekend. But that doesn't happen every time. That's the bid strategy. Okay, so the retail strategy, you start high and you like reduce, reduce, reduce. And unfortunately, a lot of sellers, especially inexperienced sellers, do that because, you know, they know better sometimes from us. And... It doesn't work, and then of course they get upset at the agent, and then the property sits there, and then you're gonna pay condo fees and taxes or whatnot, or maybe it's vacant, you gotta pay the mortgage too. Maybe once you decide you want to sell it, you gotta just go and do do the work and just just rid of it. It's okay, you know. It, it's better to sell it quick and and get a reasonable price for it than sit on the market forever and get the same price or even lower and just be stressed out and lose more money. I mean. Remember, the real estate market is so big, it's so huge that no one agent or buyer or developer or even a government can affect it that much. Okay, I'll say it again. People think, oh, you know, you real estate agent guys, like because of you, the market is up. No, the facilitation of the transaction is what the agent does. If I didn't do it, a computer would do it, a robot would do it, and, uh, you know, a program, AI would do it. It still doesn't matter because people will bid what they're going to bid. It has nothing to do with the agent, the agent just does not have enough uh, uh, clout over the market. You look at the market of billions and billions of dollars changing hands every day, every week, every month. No one agent, doesn't matter who it is, okay, not even me, <laughs> I'm just a small guy really downtown, 
uh, can do this. Now, what the agent can do can advise you on a bidding strategy uh, and a pricing strategy. Okay, so how to price your condos? You gotta price it smart. And the way I like to price it is either go with, hey, here is a really attractive price. Everybody come in, give me a great offer. Obviously, you see the comparables. You know I price it below the comparables, and I, I am expecting a good price, but I put in this number to get your attention. And then come and give me the offer. If you give it, great. If you don't, that's okay. What I'll do, if let's say I priced that uh, and I didn't get the offer, and I price it say 25,000 under the price, I'll bring the price back up. I'll just bring it back up and let it sit on the market and see what happens. That's totally cool, especially if you're like an in-between season. You know, you're you're just cleared New Year's or or August. You know, these are slow times, so. Sometimes the property has to sit there, but it has to sit there with a reasonable price. Maybe someone will look at the property and go, that's really good, you know, if it's still available in September, after I put my kids back to school, I'll go, I'll go see it. And that's usually what happens. But if you as a seller putting uh, your property at like exorbitant price, it just doesn't make any sense. And you think, well, you know, just have people come and give me an offer. It doesn't work like that because they're not. They're going to get a bad vibe from it. They're going to say, this guy is crazy or this woman is nuts, right? That, that's, that's how they speak and they say, well, why would I give this person an offer? They're not reasonable at putting their price. What's the point of me putting the offer? That's how people think as buyers. As sellers, people think, well, you know, I'm just going to like ask 700000 even if it's only worth five fifty, but someone will give me a good price for it. No, it's not going to happen. This is what's called a perfect market. It is so huge. This real estate market is so big. There's so many people involved, so much money, so many moving parts. No person can affect it. No one. The only thing you can do is price it in a way that will be attract, attractive to a buyer. Get their attention, you know, and you got to be around the price where you're offering and then get their attention and try to get the best offer you can. And if you're not going to get an if you're not getting an offer, which is a whole other video, then you're doing something else wrong. Uh, you know, 50% chance your price is not good and the other 50 is your marketing is not good. Okay? Move away from this big truck here. Mosto Foods, chef choice for food service. Okay, I hope it's good. <laughs> oh, it's coming back. I'm gonna let this guy uh, finish beeping and I'll give you a little bit more information and we're done for today. Let's see, okay, good job parking there, buddy. Okay, so, I wanna sell this condo and um, you know, a lot of these condos are problematic. Um, it could be an inner corner, there can be an older building, it could be lower floor, it could be doesn't have any view, it could be close to the elevator. You know, if you want to find wrong with someone, you always will. Uh, that's not going to get you far in life. But nonetheless, we have to appreciate that, you know, the second floor condo is not the penthouse. So I need to price it accordingly. You know, if it's a second floor condo and it doesn't have a lot of view, uh, okay, that's fine. That's, that's, a re that's a good place for someone to live. I cannot afford more. I'm looking for that deal. Uh, but nonetheless, don't price it like the penthouse. Or don't price it like the condo five stories above that has the view. Look at these units here. Look at these inside corner units here. Okay, that's 525 Adelaide. It's really nice, but it's got no sun. Uh, I don't know if it's got any sun during, during the day, maybe early during the day, but right now it doesn't have any sun and won't have any more sun until tomorrow. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. Um, don't overprice these things because people come and see it. At the same time, you got to decide, do you want to do a retail strategy where you start with full price or maybe just above it? And then you're going to just wait and wait and wait and you know you have to keep it clean and get all the showings come in and the texts and the emails and the questions and the lowball offers because also when you price too high, you got to get an offer. You know, you got to get an offer from someone just crazy as you. So you price it way too high, they're going to give you an offer way too low. <laughs> If you have the time and the, and the inclination to do it, great, but you know, like, it's complicated. The other way you can do it is simply price it just a tad below the fair market value. And how do you know what a fair market value is? Ask me. It's not that I'm a magician, but I can show you comparables and I can say, you know, here's a very similar unit um, in, a, in the same building or nearby, same area, and that's what they got. And look how long these type of units uh, get usually and how long they stay on the market and all that stuff. So you get a very good idea because there's so much information available that we can pretty quickly, you know, look at the numbers and extract a right number. And that's why I'm good at it because I can find the right number for these condos. So, you know, a condo of, uh, say you want to get uh, 
four eighty nine, uh, four uh, ninety nine for the condo. Maybe price it slightly below that just to elicit offers. It's still within the price, you know, a couple thousand, couple thousand dollar below, half a percent below. That's all you need. Two percent below. If you think, you know, if you're not so sure, um, if you want to price it way below, don't price it more than three or four percent below what it's worth, because then it looks like a mistake, and it's it and. And then people are gonna get upset. They go, well, you know, why did you post a five hundred thousand dollar condo for four hundred thousand? People do it. It's okay. I've seen condos uh, advertised at three ninety nine, where they're worth like in the fives. I don't think that's very effective. You know, like it's just too far. The gap's too large. You gotta be reasonable when you offer. Um, I don't like to price above, and I don't like to price very, very high because I find that usually it does not work. I prefer to price just around the mark maybe on the market it's if it's super you know needed or had below to kind of get that attention or if it's really hot i'll price it you know one or two percent below get all the offers and try to close it up in one weekend that's possible too so that's how you price uh your property for sale and if you want to think about it put yourself in the eyes of the beholder as a buyer and put the buyer buy your hat on for a second and tell yourself okay if i were to buy this condo and i look at it and look at all the comparables okay because that's what those buyers do they're going to go to see your unit or look at it online if it's an assignment and then they're going to look at everything else similar and they're going to try to see what's the best value for them because everyone at the end of the day wants the best price the best value the more most amount of space the best light the best views on and on and on so you got to be reasonable and if your offer is good if you're offering good value you will sell and you will get the right price for it and that that was my strategy all along every time that i and, and i do mostly listings a lot of listings for resale and uh, assignments and that's my strategy i price it right i price it just enough to showcase the value the marketing of course i make it unique i make it nice i spend a lot of effort on the marketing on the pictures you know every every picture is the best we can there's a reason for everything why we order the pictures this way not that way why we say this text and not that how we speak with all the agents that call us how we speak with all the buyers that call us put yourself in the eyes of the beholder become put the buyer's hat on sellers and tell me if you if you as a buyer would buy this condo I'll give you an example this guy comes to me and says you know i got this uh property for sale and it's not selling it's not selling i don't know what's wrong it's not selling well Look at what you're offering, okay? Your offer must not be attractive. I mean, if it's on MLS, everyone can see it. There's 55,000 real estate agents in Ontario. You know, your listing will get hundreds, if not thousands of views right away. It's the most effective way to do it. And of course, it gets propagated in every single site. You know, yossi.searchrealty.co, condos.ca, searchrealty.co, all these site.ca.co, all these sites. Um, propagate all these listings with this every listing shows about 5,000 times by the way when you're on MLS about 5,000 sites propagate that so it's huge so you know everyone will see your listing so obviously if you're not getting the showings or if you're getting the showings but not offers you know that's a problem if you're not getting the showings at all either your presentation is wrong or your, pr or your price is way too too off if you're getting showings but not getting offers that means your marketing is probably really good but once they come in they don't like it as much. It doesn't look that hot to them. And then they prefer just not to put the offer. So put yourself in the eye of the buyer. Even, uh, you know, Yossi, I want to sell this condo. What do you think it's worth? How long is it going to take me to sell it? And how much is it going to cost? And I'll tell you exactly. And the other thing I'll do is I'll show you what else is available, what is sold, because that's what I'm going to do to find your, own, your value, the value of your property. And I'll show you that. And together we can find the right price that works for this specific property. Okay? This is how you price your properties for sale, Toronto condos, assignments, land, commercial, whatever. There's a retail strategy. You start up and you go down. Don't like it. Risky. Uh, don't use it unless you load it and you don't mind losing a bit of money and you're sitting on like a $10 million property. That's fine. But if you're just, you know, looking at the $500,000, $1 million, $2 million, even $3 million, price it well. Let me know. I'll help you. That's it.